Hi, everybody. Uh, today, I'm going to be um, talking about two-point perspective and how to put an arch correctly in two-point perspective. My inspiration for today is going to be the Arc de Triomphe in Paris. And um, because we're going to be looking up at this building, I'm going to bring my horizon down um, to be lower, making it uh, feel like I'm looking up. Uh, at the building itself. I'm going to give myself two vanishing points at the edges of my um, horizon line or my picture plane. And I'm going to create a um, vertical line that's going to be the corner of the building. I'm going to take the that vertical line and I'm going to point its sides to the vanishing point, um, taking the left hand side to the left vanishing point, the right hand side to the right vanishing point. And I can even label my vanishing points, right vanishing point, left vanishing point. And now I need to decide how wide this building should be. And the Arc de Triomphe is wider on one side than it is on the other. So I'm going to make it wider on this side and skinnier than the other by using vertical lines to indicate where that form ends. And then um, what I know about the Arc de Triomphe is that it has a large arc on this larger side and a small door doorway arc on the smaller side. And that arc is directly in the middle of the form. So I'm going to take the trapezoid that I've created um, as the side there, and I'm going to find its middle so that I can find the middle of that, of where I'm supposed to put that archway. So to find the middle, I'm going to um, create opposite, um, connect the opposite side of, sides of this form. Uh, with diagonal lines, and so this is going to be the middle of the form. I'm going to actually take that middle and I'm going to point it to my vanishing point. And I'm also going to uh, indicate the middle with a vertical line so that I know how where the middle is for that entire form. And the arc uh, or that doorway, it's it's pretty high. So I think that it starts at about here in the middle of that form. And so I'm going to create a line that's diminishing towards the vanishing point at the top of my form there so that I can understand like where this doorway starts. And I, I'm not absolutely positive, but I think um, that um, that that doorway is pretty wide and, um, and it's going to be equal distance. So I think that it's basically broken up into three equal parts, one kind of leg, the door, the other leg of the arc. And, uh, these lines are going to actually help me break this form up into, um, a three it's actually four equal parts. So this one, this one, and this one are all equal distance from each other. And um, I'm going to just give myself indications for for those. Um, and I could be I could be wrong. I don't. I'm not sure if that middle arch is um, wider than those two or not, but. For the sake of our drawing, I'm going to make the opening of our arch this big. And if only I could get this line to actually be parallel to this line, vertical, like that line, it would make the drawing better. So um, what I now have is where the opening of this arch doorway is going to be. And what I know is that this is going to be the apex. This is going to be the top of the arch. And uh, the arch itself like comes down and kind of 
terminates not at the middle of this entire uh, object, but beforehand. So maybe somewhere around here. So I'm going to take another line and I'm going to push, push it towards the vanishing point. And so the arch itself, the part of the door that's create that uh, ha has an arch is going to fit inside of this rectangle. And now that I have that form, what I can do is I can just uh, imply that line from this corner to the apex to this corner. And I just want to uh, make sure that I'm giving it a really nice um, arch uh, so that it's uh, getting uh, close to that corner, but of course doesn't touch that corner. It's kind of connecting those two. So now that I have that, the only thing I really need is to recess the interior of this doorway. So if this is the edge, and if this is the other edge of this arc, then I'm going to take this corner and point it to the right vanishing point and um, decide and basically like let it go through the entire form. And then um, the other thing that this arc kind of has as characteristics is um, is that it does have um, some levels. So I'm going to take the corner of that arc and point it to the vanishing point. And I'm going to take the top of that arc and point it towards the vanishing point as well, kind of creating that feeling like it's going into the space. Then the other thing that's happening within the Arc de Triomphe is that it actually has two other archways. There are uh, ones on this wall, uh, on the interior of um, the structure, and then ones on this one. And they are the same height. And they are much lower uh, than, of course, this arch. They happen, they're smaller and they happen lower. So um, I think that in terms of the arch itself, I think that the top of this uh, arch happens a little bit lower than half. So maybe about here. So I'm going to take uh, a line from the opposite vanishing point and indicate where I think the top of that arc, arch will be. And I'm going to um, point uh, that line towards the opposite vanishing point and think about where it intersects this column. And then I'm going to point a line to the opposite vanishing point because that's going to give me uh, the same height of this arch on this interior arch by thinking about the fact that their height is going to be on the same line going towards that perspective point. Now I need to um, find the uh, middle of this object. And the other thing that I can actually do before we get too far is that I think in order to make this width the same as the interior width, I can take the bottom of that corner, point it to the opposite vanishing point, and wherever they um, it hits that line, that's going to be the same width as uh, this exterior on the interior. So I think that I actually will see just a little bit of the... Um, edge of the building in here. And let me see if I can get my line to actually be vertical. And then um, I can mimic this arch here until like as much of it as I can see. And so I want to put two matching arches in this trapezoid and in this trapezoid. And now they should be the same uh, width in correct pictorial space. So now I need to find the middle of that trapezoidal form so that I can find the top of the arch. And 
And I'm going to do the same thing to this one. I'm going to find its middle, which I guess I already have. I had it from, uh, actually, it's not true. That line happens to intersect, but it doesn't, it's not necessary that that's exactly where that, that line would have landed. So um, that's a, that's actually a, a coincidence that those two are sharing the same center point. And now that I have that center point, I need to decide where does the, oh, I guess I already decided this is where the arch is actually going to start. And then I need to think about how, how much, how far does that arch go? And this arch actually um, curves more than this one. And so I think I'm going to estimate that the arch ends at about here. And um, I think that I once again want to use that line to decide the width of that space that it's going to occupy, that doorway size that it's going to take up. So I'm going to pull two vertical lines of where those lines are intersecting. And this is going to be the size of that doorway. And then I want to do the same thing on this side, but I want to make sure that that archway is the same size. So I'm going to pull a line that goes to this vanishing point, And then wherever it hits that wall, I'm going to pull a line that goes to the opposite vanishing point. And that's going to give me that width of that doorway that's the same size as the one in front of it. And now I need to connect the dots. So I'm going to curve that line and have it touch at that apex. I'm going to curve that line and have it you know, be as symmetric as possible and have it touch at that apex. I'm going to do the same thing on this one. Uh, I'm going to take the bottoms of these doors and point them to the opposite vanishing point so they start to go in. And now I'm going to reinforce my lines. So let's see, I'm going to use a nice black pencil to reinforce my lines. Maybe actually this one is a really dark blue, I think. So I'm going to now indicate the lines that I actually want to keep. See the edges of the arc. And again, the Arc of Triumph is really my inspiration. Does it look exactly like it? No, but it helped me to think of the kind of uh, arches that I could demonstrate for you guys. So I'm just reinforcing the lines that, that I'm keeping. So that we can stop being as confused with all of the other lines that are, that are happening where we were finding the center points, etc. You can see it more clearly. And part of the reason why we use a blue pencil is because um, when architects would uh, create drawings, you would use a, a blue pencil that wouldn't photocopy. So it wouldn't show up on photocopies. So you could actually make a copy of this form and um, all those blue lines would go away. So let's just, um, I'm actually going to still keep 
this line because I think it's important. I'm actually going to repoint it towards that vanishing point and I'm going to reinforce it on this other side because I think that I like this architectural part of the building itself. It's not a building, it's a monument. <laughs> I keep saying that. And then what I can do is um, I could start to shade in that arch. And then the interior part of that building. And I think that that illusion will be even stronger. So we're looking at the, the bottom of that arch. And then I can shade in this side. Well, I hope that this was useful and that you now can start to put arches in all kinds of um, places. Um, I think that it's always just really fun to do this. And um, some students were asking um, uh, how to make an arch so that they could make something like a um, skate, uh, a skate, skate park half pipe. So it doesn't have to be something as, you know, structural and architectural. It could, what, what, a skate park half pipe is structural and architectural, but it's also um, quite fun and contemporary. So you can also create this arch uh, upside down to get that same effect. All right. Um, thank you so much. And I hope that you guys tune in for the next video.